Hey everybody, it's Christopher here with 3DO Gaming, and today we're going to be going over five hidden gems on the Nintendo 64 system that you can play on the Retroid Pocket 2. So let's go ahead and get started with this list, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching, guys. Coming in at number five is Mischief Makers. Now this was developed by Treasure and came out in 1987. If you're not familiar with Treasure, Treasure made phenomenal games especially during the Sega Genesis era and into the Sega Saturn. So if you look at their history, Gunstar Heroes, Dynamite Heady, Alien Soldier, Light Crusader, Guardian Heroes, and the game again after that was Mischief Maker. Flew under the radar, but it is a phenomenally good game. They have a history of making games that push the system to the limits, and they did it here with Mischief Maker. So let me go ahead and give you a look at that game. Coming in at number four is Body Harvest by DMA Design. And this came out in 1998. It was supposed to be a launch title for the N64, but Nintendo turned it down because of the violent themes. Now, if you're not familiar with DMA Design, you may be familiar with what they're known as now as Rockstar North, the same people that bring you the Grand Theft Auto series that everyone knows and loves. Now, Body Harvest, you are... It's an alien invasion, and they're actually harvesting humans, and you're trying to combat that by traveling through the last 100 years on, on Earth. A lot of fun. Give it a try. It's a very unique title for the N64, but it's well worth the time that you'll put into it. Again, Body Harvest by DMA Design, which is now Rockstar North. Here we go, guys.
Next up at number three is Blast Corp. This is a game that came out in 1997 by Rare, and this was right at the beginning of their string of phenomenal games where they had on the N64, like Killer Instinct Gold came out a few months before this. You had Goldeneye around this time, Donkey Kong Land 3, Diddy Kong Racing. And this is all between the late 96 or 97 era for Rare. Phenomenal game. You're actually, uh, you're a demolition team, basically. And you're just tearing down buildings, waiting for a, a nuclear missile carrier to go through. You're clearing the path for it. A lot of fun. A lot of fun to just mess around and blow stuff up. Destroy buildings. It's great. Give it a shot. I'm sure you'll love it. I'm going to show you a quick little play of this game. I love playing this one. It's a great game. It did sell about a million copies, but it flew under the radar also. I mean, you had a lot of the big titles by Rare at the time coming out, and Blast Corps kind of got lost in the mess. But give it a shot. I'm sure you'll love it. All right, here you go, guys. Coming in at number two is the tactical role-playing game Ogre Battle 64. A unique game for the system. There's not many, I don't, actually don't know of any other real tactical role-playing games that came out for the N64 during this time period. Phenomenal game. Came in the later part of the system. Came in, out in 2000. It's by a company called Quest. Uh, Quest made only a few games, but they made some really great games. Ogre Battle series is their main uh, series that they developed. If you ever played Final Fantasy Tactics or Final Fantasy XII, the same people from Quest, a lot of them went over to Square, um, Square Enix, and they made those games. And eventually Quest was actually purchased by Square. So the company's no more, but the people that work with it, you'll find their fingerprints all over a lot of Square games that came out after this. But Ogre Battle 64, great game, great storyline to it. Uh, give it a shot. I'm sure you'll like it. Uh, if you like these ones, they, they do have, uh, this is actually the third one in the series of the Ogre Battle series. So there were two previous ones that came out. I believe they're on the N64. So you may want to take a look at them as well. But here you go, guys.
And lastly on the list, guys, number one, Snowboard Kids. Now, this is it could be either one. There's two versions. There's Snowboard Kids and Snowboard Kids 2. They're both great games. I definitely recommend both of them. But I had to pick one, so I went with the original. N64 actually had some great alternate sport games, whether it was like Wave Race 64, uh, 1080 uh, snowboarding. But one of the funnest ones to play, and one, one that a lot of people didn't really didn't get an experience, Snowboard Kids. It was difficult to find when it came out. I know I was at, when it came out, I actually was working at KB Toys. And it was something we had a hard time getting in. We didn't see a lot of it, but it's a great game. It's a lot of fun. I have already put up a video about this game here, but I'm going to show you another replay of this. Great game. Give it a shot. Give the second one a shot. They're both well worth the time. But Snowboard Kids, and uh, here we go, guys. Take a look at this. And thanks for watching the video, all of it, going down through 5 to 1. I had a great time making this, and I just want you guys to have some, some games you may not have tried out, something new, other than just the, the regular Mario Brothers that everybody knows, which they're great games, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of great games that came up for N64, and it's a smaller library, so take a look at these, experience it. They all run well on the Retro Pocket, too. So I wanted to make sure of that too. So I'm going to show you gameplay as like for this game as I have the other ones previously. So Snowboard Kids came out in 1998. Here we go, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.